Hey, John here. Today I want to talk about an issue that if you haven't encountered it, you probably will if you stick around this online publishing business long enough. And that is how you keep going when the chips are down or you lose interest. And I find that the two are related. When things aren't going well, you take a smoking hit from Google or Facebook algo changes on you or things just aren't going your way, especially after a nice run up, how you, you're going to lose, you're going to lose interest. I've been there. I, I know what it's like. You're just like, you know, you made all this progress and now it just seems like one step forward, five steps backward. And it's a real drag and it's going to happen. It happens in a lot of businesses. I mean, not every year is year over year growth. All right. So what can you do to keep going, keep at it? And what's one thing you shouldn't do? Okay. So I can tell you, you know, a handful of times this has happened to me, right? Like 2012, Google Penguin, I did all sorts of the link building, not supposed to do. My sites got absolutely crushed and I had to start over and it was frustrating. But you know what? The, the, the thing that I learned from that experience, and I certainly hope I, I never have that happening again. That, that was the, that was the biggest hit. And it was uh, back. I was uh, pretty new to going full time online. So I didn't have a job to fall back to. And what I learned was that I had learned a lot. Okay, so I had done things I shouldn't have done. And it's easy to say now because I, I probably wouldn't have had the success I had before Penguin had I not done what I've done, right? So I can't really say I should have done things differently because I wouldn't have had the same results. But anyway, uh, I had to completely change uh, strategies. But the thing is, I had learned a lot. So I had I had to use what I had learned, knew what works, and I had to change a few things. So I came to that realization after taking two weeks off. And, and I know that is sounds counterintuitive, especially when you just take a hit and you're getting worried. Uh, for me, I, I, I actually took two weeks off and just relaxed. I mean, I, I was online and I was doing some research and stuff, but basically there was no point working on the sites. I knew they were toast. And so I had to reevaluate everything. So I, I took time off to try to think about things, what I wanted to do next and so forth. And, and the solution came to me was to build a site that Google wanted to rank. I had to start over and it took a while to figure out exactly what niche I wanted to do, how I was going to go about it. And it was a different way of doing things. And it wasn't going to be fast because I wasn't building the type of links that I did that got me pun got me penalized in the first place. And so I knew it was going to be a long haul, but I managed to do it, but it wasn't easy. Okay. So I think the first step to do, if you're, if you're losing interest and that's perhaps tied to you know, having some setbacks or not, or you just having setbacks, just take a break and reevaluate, think about things that can help quite a bit. Uh, I'm, I'm a big believer in, in taking vacation time and, and rest because I usually come back and I'm like, super gung-ho and I get a lot more done rather than just keep plowing on and on and on and on. And then you just, I've had it where, you know, sometimes you do just keep going and working more hours than I should. And I lose interest, not because things are necessarily going bad, but just because it's just too much and I, I've just got to walk away from it. So oftentimes just walking away, taking a break, maybe it's one day, maybe it's a week, maybe it's two weeks is a huge help. All right. So that's, Step number one. Second is put on your testing hat. Now, this this will depend on the situation, right? So, if your site takes a hit, regardless of what your traffic source is, generally speaking, most people are getting mostly Google traffic. If you take a hit, you got to put your testing hat on. You have to put your research hat on. And you have to figure out what's going on now usually the people who spend a lot of time trying to figure out, you know, what, why, why sites took a hit from a big Google update, uh, that takes a few weeks. So you're not going to get answers right away. So you're just going to have to just settle down. Maybe you look at your own site, see, see maybe what you've done wrong. Maybe think of any changes you've made. And more importantly, think about what you can do better. And so for me, I find it super helpful is I'll look for sites in my niche and, and I've, I've had traffic drops, not, not just the ping one. I've had them, I've had them, intermittently over the years and, and you do this long enough it's going to happen you're not always going to be on the winning side of an update and there's been a lot of updates lately and they just seem to keep on coming so look at your competition and track this stuff in google sheets and look at the ones the winners and the losers and try to figure out why the ones that won won and the ones that lost well see if there's any sort of uh, unifying reason that that they 
lost traffic, right? And then figure out how to make those changes on your own site. I have I have found that to be a very, very effective practice. I don't always pinpoint the exact answer, but what I do find out is, you know, I usually learn more from the sites that either win and have a huge upswing or 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 stayed stable from an update if I took a hit and I look at what they're doing. Now, sometimes it's hard to choose these sites and what to compare, right? Because there, there are some huge sites in every niche. Are they really apples to apples to say me who's got a smaller site and I'm not, I'm not some publicly traded company with you know billions of dollars in revenue and all that. I still will look at them, but I, I do prefer to look at sites that are more similar to mine that have done well. And there are always there are always a few that I could find. I track the sites in my niche pretty carefully. If I find a new one, I add it to the list just so I can see what's going on, especially in these circumstances. And I'll, I'll pay attention to what's going on. And you look at things like you know who's writing the articles, how much content are they pushing out, are they using social? Similar Web is a is a super awesome resource and it's free and you can see their traffic mix and you can see the traffic trajectory and so forth and it's not perfect but the numbers are good enough to sort of give you an idea of what's going on. So I really spent some time combing through to take a look and see uh, what what's actually working after an update and why these sites improved while me and perhaps others in the niche have dropped. Okay, so. Um, really a valuable thing to do and if it takes you a week or two that's totally fine by that point some of the SEOs are going to be making stabs at what they think is going on and you can listen to who you think you know is, seems to make the most sense and then try to maybe incorporate some of the things they're saying and into you know improving things now I'm going to caveat all this making changes to a site because I've also heard accounts where people take a hit and they don't really change anything and then six months later or 12 months later their site rebounds not making any changes adding more content and you know all of a sudden a site that google loved then didn't love now loves again i mean th that's just the way it is and sometimes that happens i tend to err on the side i need to make some changes though especially especially if it's like a uh, 25 percent or higher drop then uh, that's usually indicative that things or something needs to change all right, so uh, another option you could do, and, and this will this will be situational, is you know embrace the niche more than you have. All right, a lot of people go into niches is not really uh, a passion or an interest or anything like that to do it because there's money behind it and they can hire writers and they do it. But maybe there's an aspect of the niche where you can embrace and actually pursue it. This is what this is what I've done in the last year and it's been interesting and I think it's helped to an extent. I'm not going to say it's the be all end all and, and maybe it's just going to have a take a lot longer to to improve my site. But is there an aspect of your niche maybe that you can focus in and narrow down but you actually really sort of do something in the niche whether it's a hobby or something and, and you you uh, participate in it and and that might, well, I shouldn't say might, uh, that will definitely result in better content, whether you just provide outlines, whether you write the content, whether you hire writers and are editing or reviewing or whatever, because you know it better, you're going to be able to filter for better content. And that could make all the difference in the world. And that's something that I've done in the last year is I've embraced it. I'm focusing on one site instead of multiple at this point and I'm embracing it and I'm participating in it and I've started a local business in it and so the the whole point of that is, is I'm actually learning a whole lot more than when I started it I had it I had a, a great interest in it in a superficial level all right I had an interest level at an inspirational level but not at a deeper more technical level and now I've been learning a lot about it uh, you know I spent a few weeks actually full time just learning and I'm going to do that more and more every year uh, and then there's the whole business that I started with it so you know I, I fully embraced it and it's a it's a part it's a specific aspect of the broader site so I'm sort of reining in the topically where I'm going and focusing on that area that I'm actually like learning about and so yes I still hire writers yes I'm incorporating AI content into the mix and yes I'm writing it myself and yes sometimes it's a mix of all that 
And so I'm doing what needs to be done to produce the great content. But the fact that I'm actually learning at a really deep technical level all of this stuff, both for uh, you know the B2C as well as the B2B, I'm learning a lot from the business aspect of it, which is interesting. And I always love adding business uh, B2B aspects to niche sites. I think they, they can be uh, a, a great opportunity for almost any niche, not every niche, but a lot of niches. And I, and I like writing about this stuff because I like writing about business. So I'm learning about that. And so I'm incorporating that and all of all of that into this, the site itself. And I think it's gonna be better in the long run. So if there's an angle you like about it, even though you had no, no intention of ever actually jumping into it, uh, you know, no, maybe, maybe, maybe you start a personal finance site and it's not going so well, or you take a hit or whatever it is, but you never really cared about it. Uh, you know, let's say you cover a lot of budgeting, right? This is this is actually kind of a specific example for me. I don't have a personal finance site, but you know, a lot of successful personal finance sites are on, on the budgeting side, right? How to save money to get more money in the long run. And it makes sense and it works, it's proven and all that, right? I'm not really interested in that. I'm, I'm more interested in uh, how do I make more money? Right? That, that interests me. So if you're a personal finance site and you've been doing a whole lot about, you know, trying to make more money or you've hired people to do it, well, maybe embrace something. Maybe give yourself a six month or a one year challenge that you could profile on the site yourself on, on a budgeting exercise. And, and a lot of people have really broken into that niche with these types of budgeting, you know, trying to pay off some debt or save a certain amount of money or whatever it is. And you could set that challenge out for yourself and you can you can blog about that. And that's gonna, that's gonna be a new part of your site and it could be a very successful aspect of your site. And you'll probably learn a lot by actually just doing it, okay? So embrace the niche if that's an option for you, if, the, if you have the time for it and the inclination. Uh, so. That's what I've done, and I, I've found it to be really fun, and it's probably going to be a very good business decision. All right. Next up, number five, determine your strengths. Okay, so there are a lot of hats in this business. You know, there's the analytical side, there's the organizational side, there's the creative side, and there's a lot of hats, and we all can't be excellent at all of them. So try to figure out what your favorite aspect, your favorite hat in this business is. And then set things up where you get to spend the bulk of your time on pursuing that particular activity or task or aspect of your business instead of trying to do everything. Uh, and and if, it, if it requires that you're going to have to give up some stuff on it and just focus on what your strengths are, then so be it. Uh, for, for me, I, I like the content side of it mostly. I really do lack in organization. I lack in analytical stuff and tracking stuff and setting up tracking. Pretty bad at that. And I do the, the, the bare minimum. Where my strengths are is is the content and focusing on publishing content and whether it's in volume or it's quality or both. Um, I, I do both strategies actually. Uh, and I'm, I'm actually really having a lot of fun with social media because social social media is it's cool in a way once you get things going because the results are immediate. You know, and when you test something on social media, it, it either works or it doesn't. It's not like SEO where you have to wait six months or 12 months before you're going to see results, whether it's working. Social media is instant. So I am, I'm having fun. I'm not to say it's easy or it's a sure thing or that's guaranteed in every niche. But, you know, if you if you do get some results, uh, that, that is a side of me that I'm enjoying. Now, I say enjoying, I enjoy the testing side of things. So, I like two things. I like the content production and producing good, interesting content. And I like testing and tinkering at all aspects of this business. My problem is, is once I find something that's working, and that's usually not a problem, it's a good thing, I get tired of doing the actual operational aspect of that. And so a good example would be posting to Facebook. I love testing and seeing what's going to work and trying different things on Facebook, whether it's, it's ads or whether it's uh, just uh, posts to pages or uh, groups or whatever it is I'm testing. I, but once once I figure it out and I can create sort of this repeatable process, I really don't like having to like, you know, every day I've got to sit down and I've got to, okay, I've got to do 30 minutes of Facebook. I've got to do 30 minutes of, of Twitter. I've got to do 30 minutes. That's not my wheelhouse. And so I need to figure out how I do it. Okay, I, this is what I've learned. This is what's working this is how I got to train somebody to do it for me or else I'm just not going to get it done or I'm not really enjoying it a whole lot because it's, you know, just this 
task that is the same every single day I got to do over and over. So look for where your strengths are. Try to do more of that. M maybe you really get a kick out of social media because you really enjoy uh, working in Canva or whatever it is you use to create really cool graphics and, and coming up with uh, clever text overlays or in write-ups in the descriptions and all of this. And, and that to you is enjoyable, then the day-to-day -day of actually posting to social media is not a drag, but it's something you look forward to. And maybe that's your pivot. You move toward that, and then you try to figure out a way to offload the other stuff or stop doing it altogether. Maybe you develop an entirely new strategy that you think is going to work best for the long term. So figuring out your strengths is, is important. And most of us get in this business without the resources to just be like, all right, I'm going to just hire it all out, not really do anything. I think most of us have to actually wear all the hats for a while, figure it out, and then you'll figure out what you like. And eventually, hopefully, you're able to, to offload some of the stuff you don't really like. Okay, so that, that was my experience. I used to do everything, and I did for many, many years. And uh, what motivated me was just being able to make this work. That was motivating, and I, and I did it. And so, but once, once you're in a position where you, you can hire it out, it's kind of hard not to, so I do, right? Um, that's just how it is. But I, I do, I am mindful of focusing on the strengths, on my strengths. Next up, number six. Okay, so sometimes, and I've already alluded to this, it's a matter of just doing what you're doing. If, if, if you, you know, if, if you're just getting tired of it, but you're not really suffering a, a drop and you're just kind of getting bored or anything, walk away, take some time off. You know what? If you don't post for a week, your site's not going to plummet. That's not going to, not posting for a week is not going to be the result, not be the cause of you having a massive problem with your site. Okay, your site will survive. I've not posted to sites for a long, long time, and traffic remains stable all the time. Okay, so walk away, take a break, refresh, maybe figure out maybe what next chapter is. Maybe we want to try something different. If you suffered a big setback like a traffic drop then sometimes if you can honestly look at your site and say, listen, I'm, I'm doing it right. And I don't really understand. I mean, you gotta, you gotta be brutally honest here, right? Like, did you do some questionable link building? Is the content as good as it could be? Look at the older stuff. Are your con are there gaps that you could fill within some of the topics that you cover? When if you can honestly look at your site and say, Hmm, I really don't think there's any way I should, I could improve this content and it's good. Uh, then then just keep doing what you're doing and, and hopefully in a next update or two, it will bounce back. And that has happened. I've heard that. It's uh, That's not inconceivable. So that can happen as well. But if there's room for improvement, then you may want to take the time to do that and improve it. I, I know for my site, which launched in 2014, there's lots of areas for improvement. I, I have evolved what I do. I have done things I probably shouldn't have done, not probably for certain that I shouldn't have done. And there are things that I'm changing now and old content that I'm updating. So there's, there's a lot of stuff that I've done that needs to be fixed up. So I can't look at my site and say, oh, it's like stellar and there's no problem with it. No, there's problems with it. So if it takes a hit from the update, it's it, it needs to be fixed, it fixed up or worked on. It's not something I can just think that the next update is going to be different and reverse any drop traffic. Number seven, last one. Um, and, and this stems from number six is if the content is not stellar, fix it up. And seriously, like, look, look at the competition, look at the winners, look what they're doing, analyze it, uh, use content optimizers, figure out ways that you can make the content better, whether it's for readers, whether it's for yourself, you know, are you, are you doing the right stuff with the, with the headings or your titles good? Can you make your titles better? Are you interlinking well? There's so many moving parts. Uh, a lot of people who are in this business, even a few months in, they tend to know a lot because a lot of people spend a lot of time reading and researching and learning about this before they really start going. So you, most people I talk to and that I you know see on the Fat Sox forum and elsewhere and on Twitter, they tend to know a lot about this business and they know what needs to be done. It's just a matter of doing it. And, and I'm the first to admit, I, I get lazy with some stuff. Like when it comes to interlinking after I publish a post, it's just like, oh, you know, do I, yeah, yeah, I go do it. I, I'm not really into it, right? And so, but I do it because I, I know it matters, all right? So the one thing you don't want to do 
is knee jerk and ditch the site. Okay, you're gonna have frustrating days and be frustrating weeks. Okay, and I'm not saying that you should just keep pounding away at a site even if you're getting no results after a long time. Sometimes you have to throw in the towel and start over. Okay, there, I have launched sites that did not work out and that's just the way it is. All right, but don't be too hasty with that decision. Oftentimes a break, just walking away, doing some research, looking at competition, there's a way to rehabilitate the sites. There's a reason there's a big thriving market of people who buy distressed sites and they're able to turn them around. Read what they're writing about. They're, they're out there. Uh, you know, they, they often are into the web flipping business and the reason they do that is they look for sites that have lost value. They can identify the problems, they fix them up, they improve them, and they flip them. And when it comes to rehabilitating a site, uh, that information can be super helpful. And usually at the end of the day, it comes down to improving the content, but it could be technical aspects. If your site is slow, look into that. If your site is uh, got too many ads, I mean, uh, you know, I know it's ridiculous me saying that because I use quite a few ads, but it's possible that you're using too many ads. Look at every aspect, both the technical and the actual content side of your site. What's the navigation like? Here's an interesting perspective is, uh, you know, you know, are you getting traffic from more than one source? Okay. Google's helpful content update was pretty significant. It, it impacted my site for the worse, for sure. And I've rebounded some of that, not all of that since then. And, and, and it, if you're relatively new, that update was in September, 2022. And so I spent a lot of time really trying to dig in. I spent a lot of time f trying to figure out how to improve my site as a result of it. And my site's still not perfect, but I did make some improvements that I'm certain of. And so I didn't knee jerk and just ditch the site. I tried to figure out how I could improve things. And one thing I've learned and I'm pretty convinced of this. And I knew this a long time ago, but I, you know, things were always, you know, when things are going well, you tend not to really be motivated to put in a huge effort to make any changes. But traffic from multiple sources is actually a very good thing for websites. And so you want to try to diversify your traffic. Google specifically says that. It's like the whole, I mean, it's kind of ridiculous because they say don't write for search engines exclusively. And you should, your site should be, you know, beyond that. But it's kind of ridiculous because most sites are getting most of the traffic from Google. So it, it, it's kind of a weird thing for them to say. And it's probably not the most clear way of what they're trying to say. But what they're trying to say is, I think, is, you know, your, your site should be for an audience beyond just people searching for content. It should be for specifically for people. And so a way that I think about this is, if I have even a small audience, let's say on Facebook or on Twitter or in email or something, the article should be of such that it would interest them. No, not all of them. And it's not necessarily going to be viral, but there will be interest in it. And it's, and the title is, is worded in a way so that it gets interest and so forth. So that it actually has interest to people beyond or outside of search engines. And so, for me, that is that is a big area that I'm working on right now, and I'm really working hard on expanding traffic well beyond search, and that includes Pinterest and Facebook. And you have to choose additional platforms that are going to work for you. Some some sites are going to do spectacularly well with Twitter, and some won't. Uh, Fat Sacks tends to do well with Twitter, but my niche sites don't, and I've tried, and I'm still actually doing it, but it doesn't really work. It's the same with LinkedIn. You have to find the other opportunities there, the other traffic sources that are going to work. It only really takes one or two additional that if you really focus and make a success of, it is going to result in a significant additional traffic source. And that doesn't mean you forsake Google search. Google search traffic is fantastic. It's lucrative. It's consistent. It's long term. There's really nothing bad about Google search traffic. Uh, it's it's not even, I mean, it's it's like super passive, right? I guess the only really bad thing about search traffic is it's not instant. It takes a long time, where something like Facebook or Twitter is instantaneously, but it's short-lived, right? Unless you repost every month or every other month or something like that. Okay, so, you know, think about diversifying your traffic. That's a big thing that I'm doing. So don't knee-jerk and ditch the site. Think about how you can expand the site you know we we tend to i've had the the long tail 
keyword research and content blinders on for a long time and it's worked wonderfully and it still works and I think I believe it's still going to work to an extent going forward but I had to sort of start thinking beyond that I had to start thinking about publishing content that's getting attraction elsewhere and that's not necessarily always the long tail sometimes it is it depends on the niche I, I am in I have some topics that the the long tail straightforward keyworded title that is shows on the site exactly as it presents in you know hrefs or whatever long tail keyword research i'm using it gets excellent excellent results on social but other times it doesn't you need to jazz it up or write from a different angle or or do something to make it a little different and still try to capture for those long tail keywords so so think beyond search i think that's really what google is trying to say i think there's a lot to it i think diversifying your traffic is an important aspect and it could be as simple as and and, and it is very simple as building an email list and sending visitors from your email to the website daily and i'm doing that as well it's slow going it's not a monster hit but i am doing it and it is some traffic and it is diversifying my traffic and at the end of the day aside from the cost of the email service provider it's free traffic so nothing really to complain about except it's just not as successful as i would like it to be all right so setbacks in this business yes uh it, boredom yes uh lose interest yes and sometimes it's all interrelated from setbacks or challenges problems drops whatever it is and sometimes you just need to step back but don't knee jerk uh, and then at some point you know may, maybe it's not for you may, maybe maybe you don't like anything about this you, you like the concept or the idea of being an online publisher but there's really no aspect of it that you really do enjoy and in which case then you know there are other business models out there uh, tons of them uh, you know look for something else thanks for watching